The next comedian I've known him for a very long time, I've known him for over five years. He's one of my best friends in the comedy scene. I love talking to this guy. I'm sure you're gonna love him too. Make some noise for Socrates and Glacius! Keep going for sure. Keep it going there for sure. Yeah, come on here. Yeah. I think that guy I haven't seen him before Sunday. So, yeah, my name is Socrates. I am an American. Oh come on guys. <laughs> my fourth time here, you think one of these times would be kind enough to give you a pity yet, you know? No, not even once. So, uh, let me explain real fast. Uh, have you guys uh, been here? I have what's called the, the arc of my arm. Uh, it started uh, back in March when I was forced to learn a new Dutch word against my will, and that word was aangereden, which unfortunately means to be slammed into. And then the sentence, it was, ik ben aangereden, go to scooter closer. Which means I got ran into by an asshole on a scooter. <laughs> Which is unfortunately true. And uh, so it, 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 the first time I was here, I uh, had a sort of a off the shoulder thing going on because I couldn't get a shirt on, so it was cut here, and I had a big multicolored arm going there. And then the next time I had a shirt on, and it kind of worked. And uh, you know, now this time it should be better, but because the, the Dutch went with conservative treatment, which is a nice way of saying the Dutch are cheap. <laughs> I got this thing, which kind of works. I've got a little of this, and this is, you know, you'll see me doing a lot of this, and you know, and some of this, but like, pointing over there, and it'll work good. And I'm like this, I have to practice this at home, because they don't want it to freeze, so I do this, which is bad when your neighbors see it, you know, because it looks like I'm practicing to be a Nazi. <laughs> you know, nobody wants to live next door to a Nazi, you know? But you really don't want to live next to a guy who's practicing to be a Nazi. <laughs> So hopefully they're going to do a surgery, and the next time you'll see me, maybe I'll have a big scar or a wound, or, you know, it'll be the next part of the arc. We'll see. They have me back yet again. But, uh, so I really like bonobos. You guys, uh, you're regulars here. How many have been here many times? Just a couple. You all, are you all first-timers? Cool. Excellent. That's so much first-timers. So nice. I think we're making new fresh blood. You know, don't worry. There's not a, uh, an ape pox. There's not a monkey pox thing here. It's just, just harmless little bonobos. But, uh, yeah, that's a weird thing with the Dutch. One of the things that I like uh, living here, it's so close to the German, you know, Germany is looming over. And, uh, you know, the biggest difference between the Dutch and the Germans, which the Dutch will point out, is the fact that the Dutch are not German. <laughs> that's about it. You know what I mean? For the most part, it's, it's, it's very similar other than that. And uh, so I've been, like I said, I've been trying to learn new Dutch words. Uh, I recently learned uh, the word for frequently. Uh, fuck, the A A K, you know, use in a sentence. Fuck, the train is late. <laughs> and unfortunately for me, my arm pops. I had a little pop back there. Somebody got to experience my arm pop. It's like a painful moment. And what I do then is because it happens a lot, so I just say it frequently. When I say it in Dutch, you know, <laughs> fuck, you know. <laughs> if you've got a uh, Schweden fruit thing going on, that's a great joke. So uh, I was drinking, trying to figure out what's the deal with the arm. I was seeing the doctors and uh, I asked, you know, what do you think? And they called this a Helas and Pindaka situation. <laughs> Which uh, doesn't help if you don't know what it means. If the translation is completely helpful. It means, oh well, peanut butter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, not exactly helpful, you know. It's like a oopsie daisy kind of thing. And it rhymes. So if it rhymes, the Dutch love a good rhyme, you know. Uh, my favorite rhyme in one is, uh, no get into coke. Oh, yeah. yeah, everyone knows that one. It's completely useless and it's not exactly nice. It means fucking in the kitchen. Other than the fact that it rhymes, I don't know how to use no good into coconut in context, you know? I mean, you walk into somebody who's no good into coconut. I know, hey, last Pentecost, but <laughs> other than that. So I mentioned this the other day in, uh, in the park and uh, at a show, I wasn't just bothering people. And uh, the woman said that her father said uh, he gave her the clap. Now, as an American, apparently that means something different than in the Dutch world. 
goes and holler, that means getting smacked. In the U.S., the clap is a sexually transmitted disease. It's known as syphilis. You don't want to get the clap from your father. I mean, I guess there's worse people to get it from, but I don't think you... And, you know, paracetamol does not cure that, by the way, if, if you're wondering. So, yeah, they, uh... Another, my favorite other Dutch word that's in the same venue as Nokia and Nokia is uh, the word for nitpicking, you know, to pick at little tiny things, etc., is Nogan, which literally means ant fucking. <laughs> ant fucking. I mean, <laughs> this is a strange language, is all I'm saying, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> you know. Oh, of course, you got a great one, the weirdest one of all in some ways, which is good for Bonobo. It says, new to app, come out the mouth. Now the monkey comes out the sleeve. Yeah, exactly. It's a very strange one. I think it means to show your true colors. You know what I mean? Show who you really are. Makes sense? You know? Of course, showing your true colors is a pirate, you know, saying, so what the hell? You're really reaching when you get all the way back to the pirate world. And uh, so, yeah, I've been, uh, I'm getting older and uh, fatter. Uh, not really exercising at the moment because, you know, I have issues. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to stay in shape, you know. I mean, I'm in A shape. It's, uh, it's the shape of pregnancy. <laughs> I wish the baby would get born at some point in time, but it saved me a lot of effort. Yeah, my friend told me that your proper weight it should be your height in centimeters minus 100. Yeah, there's math in this particular thing. Sorry. So I'm 185 centimeters, so he said I should be 85 kilo. And uh, I'm like 93, you know? So it's like, my whole life I've been getting taller and heavier, you know? I don't think I can reverse that trend, you know? So I'm thinking if I gain seven inches or seven centimeters in height, you know, that would work out. <laughs> I don't think you think I can do it. No heels. Uh, yeah, well, if you saw me. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I was uh, trying to make an app uh, recently, just before the whole U.S. decided that, you know, they wanted to go to fascism. And uh, for some reason, the women didn't vote against this. I don't know, but uh, I thought it'd be a great idea, because I had a good name for it, for like a menstrual tracking app. Because I thought PAP app would be nice. But then I realized that the Republicans would use it to track people, and I realized that's, you know, I don't want to be part of that. You know? I want to be part of it. Not part of the patriarchy. So uh, I decided not to spend the effort to develop it, because, you know, Morality, not laziness, not laziness. But again, the, the hard thing in life is you try to get older. You know, you have to find that balance in life. You know what I mean? Corona, if anything else, Corona showed us that you have to have a balance. And a lot of people don't maintain that work-life balance. And uh, I know a lot of people. You know, you come to like a show with Socrates, you figure, well, the guy's intelligent, he knows things. You know, maybe he can learn stuff. Turns out it's just a name. <laughs> but. I can't give advice on work-life balance, and the most important lesson of all is that you should never take your work home with you. And this applies doubly if you're a kindergarten teacher. And you fool me once, you know, they're cute, but you know. So it's like I'm an anti-capitalist capitalist, uh, like most people who did crypto. And uh, so I like to do the stock market a bit. And it's hard when your morality conflicts with your goals in life. You know what I mean? It's like, you don't believe in money, but you like to have lots of it because it's kind of fun. You know, but a friend of mine, he has an even worse conflict because conflict, he's a flat earther. But he's also a globalist. <laughs> yeah, that's all it is. <laughs> Some of them are just kind of silly. <laughs> but uh, again, I found that, uh, you know, as I'm getting older and, and less lovable, I, I, you know, I'm not dating anymore. And so like a lot of people, I figured that my best solution was to buy a dog. And uh, thanks, appreciate that. And uh, a friend of mine, he, he got himself a dog recently. Uh, but the guy's a nihilist, you know, doesn't believe in anything, you know, except picking up dog food. But uh, so he got himself a dog and he names the dog Karma. Yeah, exactly. But it, it's a male dog. <laughs> so when people find out the dog's name, invariably they'll always say, Hey, Karma's a bitch. You go, no, man. Karma's just a dog. You make your own reality. 
because he's a nihilist, you see. <laughs> so, like I said, uh, it's been a while, uh, you know, in my life as I'm getting older, you know, some friend of mine was asking me, like, you know, when was the last time I had sex? I don't remember that for the most part. Uh, which is even worse, yeah, but when was the first time you had sex? Again, I don't quite remember. But I can at least explain that because for me it was such a stressful uh, experience. It was just so, I was so overwhelmed uh, because I had never been to prison before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I learned a lot of things though. Uh, I found out that uh, being straight and being gay, they're not that different. <laughs> I gave you an example, you know, as a straight guy, you know, I go to a cafe, a bar, etc. I can't get laid. Thanks, for sure. <laughs> However, as a gay man, I choose not to get laid. <laughs> See, at the end of the night, the end result is exactly the same. But the difference is empowering. <laughs> See, now I get to be the stuck-up little bitch who's too good to suck a dick. Well, I lost at the end on that one, okay? <laughs> some of these things are old, but some of them are right now. But uh, yeah, I'm not exactly religious. Uh, I don't understand the idea of prayer in general. You know, God knows everything, made everything, kind of planned for everything. So I don't get the idea of prayer in general. And uh, you serious? <laughs> you know, I'm Greek. We've invaded people too, you know. <laughs> but I'm not religious, you know. I mean, unless the guy's got a gun. You know, I can be flexible, you know. But I was, I was actually baptized Greek Orthodox as a baby. It's no real big deal. They put me in a bowl, priest poured olive oil over me. Honestly, I, I could have been a salad. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I had, had a bunch of relationships. They all ended pretty much the same way. Uh, like that French film, you know, the French play. You know what I mean? Uh, Les Miserables. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, uh, basically my wife, uh, we were having troubles there at the end there, bedroom problems, and uh, you know, I said, you know, do you think we should need professional help? And she said, no. She said, I need a professional help. <laughs> well, I can take a hand. <laughs> so I went to see a prostitute. <laughs> <laughs> she told me she didn't know what that was, but it was not sex. I'm thinking about getting a second opinion. <laughs> so anyway, my name is Socrates. You all are a great crowd. I love Bonobos. I see you all again soon. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.